Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. And on this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make some beautiful pine cone ornaments. Uh, these could go on your Christmas tree. They could also go in a dough bowl. And um, I have two styles. I just showed you the first style um, and I'll show you the second style. And it, um, if you go out in your yard or go to a local park, most likely you can find pine cones uh, of all different sizes and shapes to use for free. So let's start at the beginning. Welcome everyone. I'm so glad to have you here. My name is Heidi Scott. Uh, this is DIY Dreaming. Let me know if you have any questions along the way. Feel free to sprinkle all that normal stuff. Okay, this is what we're going to be using. Today I'm using Mod Podge, but you could use white school glue or that Eileen's tacky glue. You might need to water that down just a little bit, but I'm using Mod Podge and I'm using this glittering gold. Um, it's called 24 Karat. It's Sulin brand, really fine glitter from Walmart. I am also using this one. This is the one I love the most. This is called Sterling and it's silver, but this same brand also has white. Can you see that? And red, I think, and black, and a bunch of other colors. So we're gonna be using glitter. Shh, don't tell my husband because he hates it. It does have a tendency to get everywhere. Um, we may use some of these little jingle bells that I have just hanging out. We're gonna use some ribbons. And I'm gonna show you guys a new bow that I have just recently figured out how to do, and it's really easy. So we'll be using some ribbon, a little bit of twine, and then our pine cones. Okay, so these pine cones that I'm playing with today came from Linda White, and she wrote me this really sweet little note. Um, and these are Indiana pine cones. So they look different, obviously, from my Georgia pine cones, but you could do this idea. I also have some gigantic ones in the basement that I found in um, Lake Tahoe last winter. Um, that are, they look more like this, but they're humongous. So this is what we're gonna be using are these Indiana pine cones. Thank you, Linda, so much. And let's just jump right in. Okay, so there's two ways you can do this. And actually there's probably a million ways that you can do this. First thing is you need to gather your pine cones. If you're gonna pick them out of the yard, out of your neighbor's yard or off the ground in a park or a parking lot, then most likely they have some little critters that are living in here. So you're going to want to put them on a cookie sheet, cover that with tin foil in case there's some uh, pine uh, sap in here that will melt you, which is super hard to get off of a cookie sheet. And you're going to put them in the oven around 200 degrees for 30 minutes or something like that. And that should um, kill all the little critters from your home found pine cones. Linda did all that with these Indiana pine cones for me in advance. And I did want to also mention that gum leaf balls are kind of fun too. This came from my yard. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but um, I have a whole bag of them. So, so that's what you need to do to treat your pine cones before you get started. And um, there's two different styles that I have made. These were the first ones that I made. These have very concentrated glitter. I'm gonna show you how to do that on just one half of the ornament. And then I used a little bit of Dollar Tree lace and some twine to do them. So here they are. I did these both silver. I think they're really pretty and they're going to look beautiful just tucked in my tree this year. So, um, so that is one option to do heavy duty glitter covering almost every single bit of the pine cone. You can go all the way up to the top, whoops, all the way up to the top of the pine cone or just do a third or a half, whatever. It's totally personal preference, what you like. Okay, the other option is to do your glitter um, much lighter. And for these, I did the whole pine cone. But you can see some of the brown, so it's not fully um, 
glittered. This is the silver. And this is the bow that I'm going to show you how to make, which is super, super easy. And here is the gold. I did put my gold on a little heavier, but I like, I like this style when it's kind of lighter. So let's do that style first, and then we'll do the heavy duty glitter one next. Okay, so to do the all over glitter, um, I'm going to use one of these little chip brushes. <laughs> Mine are cruddy, cruddy, cruddy. I've used them for a million different things. Pure bristle made in Indonesia. One and a half inches. They look terrible, but it doesn't matter because the Mod Podge doesn't care. Okay, and I'm going to dip it in my little thing of Mod Podge. And I'm using matte Mod Podge, but honestly, you can use whatever you want. Or, like I said at the start of the video, any kind of glue that you want. I don't think this has got enough water to come out of it. Okay. Um, so use the glue that you have on hand. So I'm just getting Mod Podge on the end of my brush and kind of pulling off the excess. And then I'm just going to start at the top and I'm going to go down. And see what it does? It kind of just hits the tip of each one of these little spiky things. So you want to not, um, not have your brush be completely covered by it. Here is what I have. This would be a super fun project to do with kids. Really, really, really fun. Um, but do cover your area because you will have glitter everywhere. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do my silver because it's my favorite. And um, these Su Lin come with this kind of a top. So I'm basically just going to... I'm doing it on a paper plate so that I don't have to waste any of this goodness so that I can put whatever doesn't stick to my pine cone back in my little thing of glitter. So be, um, be generous with sprinkling it out at this stage. It is, I mean, this is so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to set it in just a little paper bowl for a second. And I'm just going to fold my paper plate in half. Whoops, I need to take my lid off. This Sulin glitter from Walmart is under $6. I can't remember because I bought these last year or the year before. But it's great. You can use any brand of glitter, any color, any size, just whatever appeals to you. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to build a bow for this one. And then we're going to um, put it on. I'm going to show you how to attach it with some twine. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to make this style. So stay with me. Okay, so this is some burlap ribbon that I have picked up at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to get about 18 inches. Hopefully I have that much left on my left on my little Okay, that's about 18 inches. And I have a video, if you're drowning in ribbons, which I definitely I still am, because I have a little bit of a thing with ribbons, but if you're drowning in ribbons, I do have a video where I show you how to switch off of the round spools of ribbon to these little ribbon cards. It's here on DIY Dreaming. Okay, so like I said, this is about 18 inches, and it's easier if you're going to dovetail the ends to do this before you make the bow. ribbon 
is going to involve a needle and thread. So just be ready. And you want to do it, this ribbon really doesn't have a front side or a back side exactly, but you want to make this inside out because um, Yeah, so I just made, it looks like one of those breast cancer loops, and then I'm going to pull this part down, and I'm getting a pin to hold it together while I get my needle and thread ready. Okay, and then we're going to do a gathering stitch. Yeah, this is going to be the back. I'll hold this up in just a second and show you. So I'm just doing a gathering stitch or a running stitch. I know people who are like uh, real seamstresses and all that, they know what the proper language is, but I'm just going to call it a gathering stitch or a running stitch or a cinching stitch or something like that. Okay, so my stitch is in there, and then I'm gonna pull it tight. And this is what it's gonna look like once it is pulled tight. Okay, so then I need to keep it tight while I do a knot. And this center part right here that has the stitches in it it's going to be covered up, so don't worry about being able to see this white thread. Okay, okay so then I'm just going to decide which... Um, what I want to cover it with. And because I'm putting it on this silver pine cone, I was kind of thinking about using one of these gray ribbons. I think I'm going to use this gray dot. We just need a little bit. What do you guys think so far? Oh my goodness, thank you guys so much for the stars. That is so kind of you. I really appreciate that. Okay, so the back, is going to be the side that has the tails. So put a little hot glue on the back and start your little ribbon that's going to cover up the center. I'm just going to pull it around. Glue it to itself. Excess. And there we go. There's an easy peasy peasy ribbon um, to go on a pine cone. And I have been putting these little silver jingle bells on them. So I'm going to find one that is about the right size. I'm just going to glue it on the polka dot ribbon. started making Christmas ornaments. Anyone? I, um, I have a box over here that I'm going to store all the ornaments that we make as we're, you know, going along through October and November and into December. And um, anyways, okay, so this is the pine cone. It's not 100% dry, but it's good enough. And I'm just going to take some twine or, jute, or you could use a pretty ribbon if you want. It's absolutely whatever you want to do. And I'm going to put a knot at one end. You can make your loops big or small, depending on what you like when you're hanging things on a Christmas tree. See, there's the knot. And then I'm going to look at my pine cone and see where do I want to glue it. 
And I'm going to glue this knot right to the front of my pine cone. Uh, I'll hold it up. And it's going to get covered up with the bow. All right, and this is what I'm using today, this Sure Bonder um, Cool Shot uh, gluing device. Um, because, well, I use this every day, but I don't like to get my fingers burned anymore. I'm just not willing to take that chance. And I've got glue on my fingers already, right now. So um, these you can pick up, it's Sure Bonder brand. You can pick them up at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, probably just about any craft store for under $10. It's a mini, and um, it has a cord. So if those things are important, you can look to see if you can get a cool shot that is not a mini. So I'm going to put some glue over the top of my little twine. it's going to be so pretty. So let me let that be drying for a moment here. Okay. And let's do the other style of pine cone. For that, you're going to want a brush like this. You're going to want a brush that's kind of stiff and small. So you can get into all those grooves. And Let's just do this one right here. You could do all these same things with this kind of pine cone, this kind of pine cone, whatever kind of pine cone you have. All right, so with this one, I'm gonna basically put a ton of glue on and push it up so each one of these little pointy things, what are these called, who knows, are covered all the way into the inside. This up and show you. Can you see what I mean? And I decided for this style just to go about um, a third or a half of the way up because I thought it would be cool to have part of it be the natural. This year I'm doing my Christmas tree and my decorating in a combination of creams and natural browns and light grays with um, a little touch of metallics and um, a little bit of black. So it's going to be very, very neutral. Last year I did a bright red and white theme, which I loved. It was so fun. But I like to have the challenge of switching it up every year. So that's my plan for this year. And these ornaments are gonna be beautiful. Once they are 100% dry, I will take them outside and give them a coat of clear matte sealer spray, which will help a little bit with the glitter falling off. But if you're using glitter, you just have to know that fact of life that glitter gets everywhere. And you have to be okay with it. And I know not everybody likes glitter. Um, you Alternatively, you could, instead of um, putting Mod Podge on your pine cones and then sprinkling glitter on them, you could paint them whatever color you want. Turquoise, you know, pink, whatever your theme might be for your Christmas tree. So now I'm just looking to see. Okay. It's pretty much fully covered. And where's my water? Brushes in there. Okay, and we'll do this one in gold. So, this one I cannot get the lid to open properly. So I'm just going to um, tap off the 
silver glitter off of this plate, I just opened the whole thing up. And I'm going to really, really put a ton of glitter on this. I know these um, pine cones are pretty simple and that you could figure out how to do it yourself, totally. But I just wanted to do a tutorial on it. So I could go all the way to the top or I could just leave it like this and I'm gonna leave it like that for right now. And I'm gonna show you how I did the lacy ribbons like this. Oh my word. My craft desk is a complete disaster. Complete. Okay, I think I'll use the white ribbon from Dollar Tree for this gold ornament. Yeah, I'm trying to remember how long did I need it to be. Okay, we'll measure. It's about eight inches long. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing where I do the loop, like the um, breast cancer loop, and then I'm just gonna pull the um, back up to the front And I'm going to put a teeny little dab of glue on there. And then we're going to use our twine or our jute or whatever to cover it up. This one's so little there's no need to cinch it up with a sewing needle. Okay, and then I'm going to take some of this jute and I'm going to wrap it around a few times and pull it tighter. I'm going to tie a knot on the back. the knot. So let's clip these off and then we're going to do basically the same thing as what we did with the other ones. Um, oh wait, I need to do my loop first. I'm going to make a loop to hang it on. Look how much glue I have on my fingers. Oh my gosh. Jackie, she says they're so cute. Could I do a tutorial on the ribbons? Yeah, you know what? Um, maybe I'll do that tomorrow as one of my videos. And maybe we'll experiment with different kinds of ribbon. But using the sewing gathering stitch method, does that sound good? Okay, I'm just going to put it right here. Yay, Cynthia says yay. Okay, tell me in the comments if you guys have started making Christmas decorations or decor or ornaments or any of that. Tell me if you've started. I'm not done with fall, just in case you're worried about that. And I'm not gonna do Christmas 100, you know, percent every single day. I am just sprinkling in a little fall, a little Christmas, a little faith, a little, you know, kind of everything. So I just put some more glue on the top of 
say a little loop. Not if it's dry yet. And there we go. So here's this one, and here is this one. And when I'm all finished, I will get close-up shots of everything. Um, I'm going to let them dry because <laughs> they're still on the wet side. But this was the one that we made first. I like this one the best. We'll also get all those nasty glue strings off of these. And then here's this style. And these, were, these ornaments were practically free to make. All you needed, in case you missed the beginning, and if you hopped on in the middle, you can wait until I'm not live anymore, and then you can go back and watch the replay. Uh, the pine cones, these ones, came from Linda White. She sent me a box of pine cones from Indiana. Uh, and it is interesting how different these pine cones look from the pine cones that I find in my yard all, all the time in Georgia. But any kind of pine cone will work. So that's where I got the pine cones. So go outside in your yard, in your neighbor's yard, in a parking lot where there's a bunch of pine trees or at a park and grab some pine cones and then you wanna bake them on tin foil on a cookie sheet at about 200 for 30 minutes or so to make sure you don't have any critters living inside of them. And then we used Mod Podge and glitter and that's pretty much all there was. Yeah, go to the parks in your area. Judy says she's starting soon on Christmas and she's getting good ideas for my videos. Oh, thank you. I like to have a big variety of things on my Christmas tree. And um, the last two or three years, I've made at least 90% of what was on my tree and that was really fun to do. See. Anyways, so these, I'll get a much prettier picture <laughs> when I'm not live. Um, so anyways, that's what I wanted to show you today. I hope you liked it. Uh, Karen says you can usually find pine cones at a cemetery. That's, that's interesting. I bet you can. And you can even pick them up when they're wet. They don't have to be fully dry. They do also don't have to be completely open because um, sometimes the pine cones that I get in my yard are not super wide open and I will um, just put them in the oven, like I said, to bake the critters out. And sometimes that will help them open more. Alrighty, well, thank you guys for the stars. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please consider sprinkling it to your social media. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you missed the beginning of this video, come back and watch it on replay because I show absolutely everything there. There's two different ways to paint your pine cones before you glitter them to get these two different looks. And I show all of that in the video. So have a blessed rest of your day. Um, Come back later if you want to see these pictures. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, do a this or a this. That's a heart. Or say something to me in the comments and check to make sure you've liked and followed this page if you want to see what's coming up next because that's the stuff that Facebook is looking for to determine whether they should serve you my videos and pictures and stuff. Alrighty. Have a blessed day. I'll see you guys later. Bye.